Hi, Kipsters. Welcome to the first classwork in your break packet. If you have your break packet out now, please make sure you turn to the page that says Spring Break Classwork Number 1, Area of Parallelograms, and the aim underneath should be, not surprisingly, to accurately calculate the area of parallelograms. Uh, make sure that your name is up here, uh, where the heading should be, and that your college is over here. Okay? So, uh, we're going to start off with some facts that are going to be important for not just this lesson, but the other two in your break packet. So let's take a look at fact one. It says, if a drawing says not drawn to scale, it means that the shape is not its actual real life size. In other words, if you measure the size with a blank, it would be different than what it says on the paper. If you measured your size with a blank, uh, why don't you go ahead and call it out? What do you think might be the word that goes in the blank? Uh, for this fact, go ahead and try it. Call it out. Yeah, if you said ruler, you'd be right. So go ahead and write in the word ruler there. And now take a look at the bottom of the screen, okay? Because I want to explain what not drawn to scale means. Uh, that is a line segment, I guess people would say, that is four inches long. Like literally, if you took out your ruler now and measured it on your screen, it would be four inches. So that is something that is drawn to scale. Okay, but in math and when we do a lot of geometry and you, you draw pictures on pages and you do this in real life, you could draw that same line and label it anything you want, eight miles. Now, is that line really eight miles long? Call it out, yes or no. No, it's not. It's not even close, right? Uh, and that would be not drawn to scale. Okay, so a lot, uh, actually, I'm going to say it. Every single question you have, uh, for the entire break packet is going to have images of shapes, none of which are drawn to scale. Okay, so just don't be surprised by that. Okay, cool. Uh, that's fact one. Fact two. Area is the amount of blank units it takes to cover the inside of a flat, also known as plane, figure. It's always measured in square units or units squared. Not surprisingly, the word that goes in the blank here, and you can go ahead and write that down, is square units. So area is the amount of square units it takes to cover the inside of a flat or plane figure. Okay, take a second to write that down in your fact. And then once again, go ahead and look at the bottom of the screen. I'm gonna, you, a rectangle is going to pop up that looks like that. Now, the distance around a rectangle, you can see me tracing it down here. That's not called the area. Go ahead and call it out if you remember from fifth grade. Uh, what is that called? Yeah, if you said perimeter, you were right. Now, perimeter is measured in units, not square units, just units like these, inches, feet, miles, meters, etc. Okay, I wanted to put that out there uh, just to remind you that perimeter is the distance around the shape. Whereas if you look to the right here, area is actually the number of square units that covers the inside. So that's area, the the amount of square units that cover the inside of a shape, that's measured in square units, which will often look like this. And you'll see it with that exponent 2 that you know also means squared. So that's inches squared, feet squared, miles squared, meters squared. Okay? So just a quick thing about area, because our entire uh, three lessons for the break homework are all about finding the area, and that's the number of square units. And I don't care if it's a triangle or a trapezoid, they're always measured in square units, okay? Now, today, our focus is on parallelograms. And just to remind you, parallelogram is any quadrilateral. How many sides does a quadrilateral have again? Call it out, please. Yep, four sides that has two pairs of parallel sides. Okay, so let's check out some shapes on the bottom here. I got a four-sided shape that you guys probably remember to be called uh, the traditional parallelogram. Now, does this have two pairs of parallel sides? Parallel sides are sides uh, that, when drawn, never intersect or never cross. So check this out. There's a pair of parallel sides. Those are two roads with two cars on them. Those cars will never meet. They'll never crash. Okay? And there's another one. Okay? So this parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides. So we're going to go ahead and write parallelograms. 
And I know it's a little repetitive, but I want, I want to be clear. Parallelograms are quadrilaterals that have two pairs of parallel sides. Okay, so writing parallelograms now. I'll give you a second to do that. All right, and you might, might already be thinking, I know some other quadrilaterals that, that seem to fit this definition of having two pairs of parallel sides. Maybe you're thinking about this one. Take a look down here. That rectangle, it's got one pair of parallel sides horizontally and then another one vertically. So rectangles have two pairs of parallel sides, and they are also known as parallelograms. So go ahead and write in rectangles down there, too. Okay? Next up, how about this shape? Go ahead and call it out and see if you remember what the name of that shape is called. Yeah, if you said rhombus, you are correct. Uh, a rhombus is very similar to a parallelogram, but it has four equal sides. But does it have two pairs of parallel sides? Well, there's one, and there's the other. Okay, so... Rhombi, which is the plural form of rhombus, uh, those also are parallelograms because they have two pairs of parallel sides. We got one more left. Uh, so make sure you copy down the first three, and then why don't you go ahead and call out what you think might be the last one. Go ahead, call it out. Yes, it's the square. There's your horizontal pairs of parallel sides. There's your vertical pairs of parallel sides. Go ahead and draw squares in there. Because today, we're talking about finding the area of parallelograms, and those are all parallelograms. I know you're used to calling them squares, rhombus, rectangle, but they're all parallelograms. Okay, and we're going to find their area. All right, uh, I think on your paper below this part, you'll see this first guided practice problem. And as you see, I wrote none of these parallelograms are drawn to scale. Uh, no offense, y'all, but I think letter A finding the area of this shape should be pretty simple, something you've done in fifth grade. Okay, so check it out. Uh, you probably remember the formula for area as either length times width or base times height. I like using this definition, so if you could please copy this down, area equals base times height. Okay, and all we're going to do now is plug in for the base and plug in for the height. Uh, so area equals we're going to rewrite it each and every line. Thank you for copying this down. And now why don't you go ahead and call out what you think the base is for uh, this rectangle. Call it out. Now, if you just said 10, you're not being exactly precise. It should be 10 feet. And please write in the units there. And now go ahead and call out what the height would be. Yeah, the height's 4 feet. So we're going to multiply 10 feet times 4 feet. And once again, being real precise with our answer, I know a lot of you are going to want to say 40. And the 40 comes from multiplying 10 times 4. But the feet squared comes by multiplying feet times feet. So the answer, the area of this parallelogram is 40 square feet. And I know I'm saying parallelogram when you think of it as a rectangle, but rectangles are parallelograms, okay? But now take a look at letter B. Now that's what you normally think of as a parallelogram. And the big question for this lesson is, how the heck do you find the area of that? And you're probably noticing right away, huh? 10 feet for the base, 10 feet for the base. This is the height. It is the vertical distance from the top of the shape, the one base to the next. So the heights are the same. I wonder what the area might be. Okay, now you don't have to copy this part down. I just want to prove to you how to find the area of a shape like this. So don't copy this down, but watch what I do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw that shape again. Now check this out. I'm gonna chop it right there. I don't know if you saw that, so I'm gonna do it again. I'm basically chopping off this rectangle. Why don't you go ahead and point, and just think for a second, where do you think I'm gonna move that rectangle to? Go ahead and point on your screen. Yeah, if you said over here, you'd totally be right. So watch what I did again. I chopped, and I took this slice, and I moved it over there. And what did I make? A rectangle. And what do you know? The rectangle has the same base of 10 and the same height of 4. So it turns out, and this is a key important point, 
you can find the area of a par any parallelogram by using that same formula, area equals base times height. Okay, all you need to do is find the base of the parallelogram and the height. So go ahead and copy this part down here, please. Area equals base times height. We're going to go through the same exercise. Uh, go ahead and call out what is the base of this parallelogram. Call it out, please. Don't forget the units. Yes, it's 10 feet. Multiply by what's the height of this parallelogram? Yes, you're right. It's 4 feet. And the area is 40 square feet. So believe it or not, these two shapes, although they look different, you can find their area by applying the same exact formula. Okay? Let's try a trickier one. I, I know you have a guy to practice A and B, which we just did. Uh, but then there's one letter C. So let's check out this one. Because this one's super interesting. Uh, it's once again a parallelogram, which means we are allowed to use the same formula, area equals base times height. So please make sure you get this down. And if my video goes too fast, just pause it uh, to give yourself some time to copy it down. All right. Area equals base times height. So once again, I'm rewriting step by step. And now I'm looking for the base. And now when I think of base, I think of the line segment that's on the bottom. Okay. So you might be looking right there. And I wouldn't be surprised. And you don't see a number, but you shouldn't freak out. Because there is another line segment that is the same length of this line segment that does have a number next to it. Go ahead and point on the screen where it is. Yep, and then, and, and then call out what the measurement is. Yeah, that's one and one eighth. And I, I'm sorry, I really should have put yards there. I apologize for messing up those units. It should say one and one eighth yards. Okay, and I think I might have messed up all the units for these, but you get the idea, right? Uh, so this should say one and one eighth yards. And that's the base. Don't freak out that it's up there. Okay. Next up, even trickier, the height. So this thing, we used it. It's the base. But now we have two numbers left. And only one of them is the height. We have the one and three fourths yards, which is going vertically straight up and down from one base to the next, and then we have this diagonal line right here that is three yards long. Which one do you think is meant to be the height in this problem? Go ahead and point to it. I'm about to put an X on the screen that shows which one it isn't, so go ahead and point. Ah, let's see, did you pick this one? The height is always straight up and down. You don't measure anyone's height in real life and with them being on a diagonal. You measure height, you straight up and down. The height is one and three fourths, okay? And one and three fourths yards. But again, because I'm a fool, I put feet again. My apologies. Uh, so you please make sure you put yards there. So to find the area, it's the base, one and one eighth yards times the height, one and three fourths yards. So now we got to go ahead and solve this. And, and I like to focus first on, on the numbers. The units at the end isn't a problem. So now we have to do 1 and 1 eighth times 1 and 1 fourth. And I know that's math that you've learned before. So what I'd really love for you to do, if you're up for the challenge, is actually pause the tape and go ahead and solve what 1 and 1 eighth times 1 and 3 fourths is, making it into a mixed number. Okay, just for practice. Go ahead and pause the tape. Uh, when you get back, you'll see if you get the same answer as I do. So go ahead and pause the tape now. Okay, if you're back and you did the right thing, you should have an answer. Uh, and I'm going to go through the steps of multiplying a mixed number times a mixed number now, just as review. Uh, first step is to make each of these into improper fractions. So 1 and 1 eighth, could you call out what you got that to be as an improper fraction? Go ahead, call it out. Yeah, if you said 9 eighths, you were correct. And we're multiplying that by 1 and 3 fourths as an improper fraction, which is what? Call it out, please. That's 7 fourths. Next thing we do at Kip Infinity, we use the word shoot, shoot, which means multiply 8 times 4, multiply 9 times 7. That's going to get you 63 over 32. That is an improper fraction. Uh, so at Kip Infinity, we call it get off my back. Uh, but it's basically the same idea of the 63 becoming the dividend, the 32 becoming the divisor. 
and then you have a division problem that looks like this. You solve it, it goes in one time. Uh, and if you did it the right way, your remainder would have been 31. And then making it as a fraction would be 1 and 31 30 seconds. Your area as a final answer, and again, I apologize for messing up the units. This should say yard squared or square yards, but it is 1 and 31 30 second yards squared. Okay, most important point here, other than remembering how to do this multiplication, you are going to be faced with problems in your independent practice that have three numbers. One of them you will not be using. Make sure you choose the base and the height correctly. Okay? We have one more page to go over, and then I'm going to let you go on your own. Next up, fact four. I think this is on a separate page, so please turn your page over. And now we're going to read the fact together, Going and, and I'm going to ask you all to see if you can fill in that blank. It says the area of any blank can all be calculated with the same formula, area equals base times height. That's the one right here. Or area equals length times width. Then it says the height or width is the vertical distance from the chosen base to its opposite side. So the height being vertical, not diagonal. Okay, so what do you think, what word do you think goes in this blank? It says the area of any blank can all be calculated with the same formula. Go ahead and call it out. Yeah, if you said the word parallelogram, you would be right. And remember, when I say parallelograms, I mean anything that has two pairs of parallel sides. So those are rectangles, squares, and rhombi. All right, last thing. I know you're staring at this dude over here with his little singing voice. Uh, I always like to, to do a little chant to summarize what we've learned. Uh, so we're going to practice the first part of the chant, and it's going to get longer and longer as you go through these classworks, okay? So... Uh, I'm going to fill in the words now, uh, and why don't you go ahead and fill them, fill them out as, as I put them up on the screen. I'm just going to read it to you, and then I'm going to chant it. It goes, perimeter is the outside, add up all the sides. It's measured in units like inches, feet, and miles. So the first two words of the chant have to do with perimeter. It's just a reminder about what perimeter is and how to calculate it. Area is the inside, base times height. And now this line might be different than, than you might have learned in your school. I know a Kip Infinity, in our fifth grade, has learned a different line. But the new line goes, but only for parallelograms, no matter what the type. Okay, so go ahead and write in those four words. And then I'm just going to chant it out to you so you know how it goes. The chant goes like this. Perimeter is the outside, add up all the sides. It's measured in units like inches, feet, and miles. Area is the inside base times height, but only for parallelograms, no matter what the type. And that's it. Okay? So you guys now are going to have to rewrite the chant, filling in more of the blanks. It's something, uh, you know, I expect you all to memorize and do the best you can memorizing it. And then you're going to have some questions on your own. I believe there are five, six, or seven questions, I can't remember, uh, and go ahead and fill those out. And then click on the next video for classwork number two. Thanks for listening.